In this video, I want to discuss and demonstrate palpation at the wrist and um, in the hand a little bit with the carpal bones, some of the key landmarks there. So we're going to start on the thumb side or the radial side, and you can see this bony prominence here. That's going to be the radial styloid process in the distal radius. If I sneak around towards the posterior dorsum of the wrist, I can feel a little ridge as I come from that styloid. That's going to be what we call Lister's tubercle, and that's going to be a nice landmark for the tendons, the extensor tendons for the thumb. So we have, if I have Lizette extend her thumb, good, you can see those tendons of that snuff box point out. I'm going to keep her here, and I'm going to bring her back just a little bit, and you can see that the long thumb extensor, or extensor pollicis longus, is going to travel around that tubercle, and it's going to make that turn before it comes and inserts. The short extensor tendon, or extensor pollicis brevis, is going to actually come here before it inserts at the base. So that's going to kind of help differentiate, and you can see there's a little depression within that snuff box. We're going to palpate one of the carpals in there. You're also going to um, see the, the third snuff box tendon, which is going to be abductor pollicis longus is going to be right next to that extensor brevis tendon. So if I palpate within the snuff box uh, and I radial and ulnarly deviate, I can feel a bone pop into my finger. That's going to be the scaphoid bone. So that's going to be my first in the proximal row of carpals. If I move to the dorsum of the wrist from that scaphoid, my next carpal that articulates with the scaphoid is going to be the lunate. So as I passively flex and extend the wrist, that lunate bone is going to pop into my finger. And then finally, if I sneak over here, I can feel right beside the lunate, I can feel, again, sometimes it's helpful to flex and extend, I can feel the triquetrum. And for this bone, I really like to prop it on the palmar surface. So if I sneak her around this way, and I come in on the ulnar side, so radial side, we're thinking scaphoid, ulnar side, we're thinking triquetrum in that proximal row of carpals. I can palpate right there where my finger is for the triquetrum. And if I come to the palmar surface right on top, sitting on top of that triquetrum is a little ball, and we call that the piece of horn bone. So the piece of horn's right in there. The other thing that's nice to palpate on the ulnar side of the wrist is in that ulnocarpal joint is complex, the triangular fibro fibrocartilage complex, or more easily said TFCC. So you can kind of palpate for that TFCC, apply a little bit of pressure, and then passively ulnarly deviate, radially deviate to get in that area. So that's a nice thing to palpate as well. As we move into our distal row of carpals, the way I like to come is from this side back around. And the reason for that is if I palpate the piece of form with my thumb and sneak a little bit farther like that, I can rock forward. And then the pad of my thumb is gonna be right on the hook of the hamate. And you can feel that bony prominence really nicely. So the hamate is gonna articulate with the fifth and fourth metacarpal. So I know I'm right there on the hamate. If I come towards the thumb side or radial side from the hamate, um, then I'm above the lunate geographically, and I know I'm on the capitate bone. So the head honcho is right in the middle. That's what helps remember, helps me remember where the capitate is. It's a big bone, and it's also within, it's oftentimes called the keystone of the carpals because it's in that third pillar that we know is kind of more stable, and these mobile carpals and mobile phalanges, metacarpals move around that third pillar. So the capitate's right in the middle. If I keep going along that row, then what I'm going to locate is I'm going to locate the trapezoid as it articulates with the uh, second metacarpal. And then I'm going to come back around on the dorsum. And this is where I really like to pal palpate the trapezium. That's going to be my final carpal bone in the distal row. So again, we, we palpated our scaphoid in the snuff box. If I come towards that metacarpal, I'm going to locate the trapezium, or I could come from that first metacarpal down and locate the trapezium. One thing that helps me remember trapezium is trapeza thumb. So that's a nice little trick that will remind you of that carpal bone and where it's located. Finally, one thing I forgot to mention on the dorsum when we were here last time is this prominence on the ulnar side. And this is the ulnar styloid process. 
So I think that's it for carpals and wrist.